Hey, this is Kit Cavell of Harlands Media. Today I'm joined here with Lila June Johnson. She is joining all the other protesters here standing in solidarity for the uh, tragedy that happened in Charlottesville. So, uh, Lila, first and foremost, thank you for joining Harlands Media. Uh, on our Facebook live stream, you were talking about the trials and tribulations that people of color had had to deal with uh, during the found founding of the United States. Um, how has that really affected you, and how has that helped, uh, you know, basically get you involved as being an a activist? As a Native American woman, you are born into activism because your very life depends on it. Uh, every day, still to this day, uh, 500 years after Columbus, our lands are being assaulted, our women are being assaulted, and our sovereignty is being assaulted, and our dignity is being assaulted. Right now, the Secretary of the Interior, uh, which is the one that oversees indigenous relations, he is slashing a lot of funding for a lot of uh, native tribes and doing away with entire programs. And they're also even talking about, I don't think they'll realize this, but privatizing Native American lands. Um, and so there's a, there's a full-on war right now as we speak against indigenous peoples and indigenous lands that if we don't mobilize and stand behind native people, could be one more blow. And it's sad because we've already been through so much as native people, we're, we're barely even still alive and existent. So uh, at this moment in time, the, the, it's not just what happened in 500 years ago, it's what's happening today and continuing to happen today as we continue to occupy uh, indigenous lands in a, in a hegemonic and um, racist manner. Now, you are definitely part of the uh, Standing Rock uh, movement that was happening uh, a few months ago in regards to protecting uh, the drinking water of 18 million people. Uh, essentially, how devastating was the uh, conflict over there in regards to standing with the protesters? And do you feel that now people are starting to become aware of just the threat that, that's going to happen to them environmentally if corporations run unchecked? You know, it's sad that it took native people being shot with rubber bullets and limbs being blown off and and people being put in dog kennels and 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 attacked by dogs for their world to finally look at native american tribes and native american struggles but it did happen and people are looking now um, more than they have probably in hundreds of years and so at this moment yes it was devastating to our people to, to uh, undergo so much violence against the people at the hands of the police. However, we have set off and dispatched entire uh, like roots from that movement where people are starting to see, okay, we can obviously see that this oil company backed by the state and backed by the police is wrong. Maybe that means what's going on in my backyard is wrong. What's going on in Michigan Lake is wrong with the toxic pollution that's being dumped into there. And so we're actually creating a model at Standing Rock that is helping people all over the country see, oh wait, maybe I should think about the tribes in my backyard. No, they're not extinct. Yes, I still have responsibilities to them. And yes, it is time for us to completely stand behind indigenous peoples because we are still here and we still need help. And this still is our ancestral homeland that people did come and destroy. And so in that manner, I think Standing Rock was a huge victory because not only did we maintain our prayer and our peace throughout, we also uh, united all kinds of tribes that have never been united. We've united struggles that have never been united. And at this time, we created a huge ripple effect that at this time is sweeping the whole nation. And we've dispatched water protectors all across the country. And so to me, yes, it was devastating, but Standing Rock was a win in so many important ways. Now, there are those uh, uh, corporate Democrats who are saying that they stand uh, with the resistance and that they're trying to, uh, you know, I guess, get support from progressives. Uh, do you believe th uh, th that the Democrats will really follow through or is there really need for political reform and perhaps open up our political system to be a more vibrant multi-party system? <laughs> well, I think that Democrats and Republicans are entrenched in not only a structure but a paradigm that allows for hierarchical governing and allows for the complete uh, infusion of corporate interests into our political process. And so until that is addressed, we are not going to see a uh, very vibrant change, I think. And I think the only way for us as progressives to really replace that system is for us to 
create an alternative that's viable and that's articulated clearly that the masses can flock to. And it's going to take a lot of pushing and a lot of nonviolent pushing because the only way our movements are going to be successful is if we don't give them any ammunition to use against us. Like, oh, they're radicals, they're uh, mean, or they're violent. So creating and articulating that alternative as progressives and giving it to the public in a way that's truly loving and truly proactive and constructive. All right, and final question. Where can our viewers and subscribers uh, find you on social media and learn more about your organization and tribe? Uh, my name is Lila June, L-Y-L-A-J-U-N-E, and I have a Facebook page, and I have a YouTube page, and an Instagram page, and all that stuff. I am a public speaker, but I'm also a musician and a hip-hop artist, and all of that stuff is not for fame, it's not for money, it's just to serve Creator and serve Mother Earth. All right, well, thank you so much for joining Heartlands Media. Peace, everyone.